We just need to smush all three of us together, I'm sorry. Pretend like we like each other. Gotta do this, so. Wait, I don't like this white thing on the bottom. Oh, uh, no, that's not what I meant, Nathan! <laughs> I heard that! I'm like half offended. Because <laughs> I'm half Chinese. I'm half white, you know? I'm like half, half, kind of white. But not really, I'm like a vanilla Oreo, you know? What? Okay, hi everyone, my name is Ash. I'm Uma's assistant, and this is... Y'all introduce y'all. Yourselves, y'all selves. Painted. Hi, my name's Jared. What was most surprising when watching K-pop for the first time, and what's most enjoyable about it? Probably the energy, because yeah. everything is so kind of loud. Loud in the yeah. sense, not necessarily uh, in decibel levels, but loud as in visuals, as in choreography and music. It's all super energetic, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'd say the biggest surprise for me was the production value. It was like a lot of time and effort went into that. Also, like the whole training your pop musician's idea is like... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. What do you guys think is your most favorite thing about K-pop and your least favorite thing about K-pop? Most favorite thing is probably the choreography because I just those guys throw down, like Peyton said, like they train for that stuff, which is really cool. You can't really see that in Western pop, not nearly as much as these guys. And probably the least favorite thing is probably the least favorite thing has to do with myself that I can't speak Korean. Like I just wish I could understand what they were saying, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. Uh, for me personally, I think my least favorite thing would have to be. So when the storylines get like to the point where I'm just like, what is, what are you even trying to say? Like, uh -huh. what is happening? And then like my favorite part would probably be like the rap guys, because I mean, mm -hmm. it's always like in Korean, but it still sounds really cool. It's just like, I don't yeah. know what you're saying, but it's probably dope. What do you think your most favorite K-pop group would probably be? And do you guys normally listen to it outside of the React? Or uh, I said BTS. It's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Mostly because those guys are the heavy story guys, and I do find myself watching it outside this mostly because trying to figure out the storyline, like I feel the frustration with pain. It's like, wait, what's going on? But at the same time, that's kind of the cool thing because it kind of leaves it up to like the audience member. So that's uh -huh. why I like them is because they're such a mystery. Favorite group? No, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really listen to it outside of here. Beauty aside, I really like that group we listened to last with the Red and Velvet. I love their sound. Like, it was really, really good. Since you guys have been listening to a lot of EXO, BTS, Seventeen, all those things, is there one specific member in any of the groups that really stuck out to you guys that you guys like find as your favorite? Junko. Guy's a badass. Yeah. I do. It's like. Mm -hmm. Uh, every time he just throws it down, and it's just like, whoa, uh -huh. he's got it. Whatever it is in the K-pop world, he's got it. Probably, yeah, he's definitely the most memorable mem like member of like every listener. Just jump in. Bam, that's my boy. That's my boy. What do you guys normally listen to in general? Like, what kind of music? Oh, dang. Everything and anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I have a decently wide musical scroll for me. That it's like, I mean, of course, it's classical music. Then there's like, I guess in my free time, I mean, anything from like really, I don't want to say shallow rap, but like the rap is just kind of like, I mean, a lot of jazz and a lot of like R&B, neo soul, funk. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, to me, like music, whatever I listen to, it's like whatever I'm feeling, like long as I'm paying sides, like if I'm, if I'm feeling a certain type of something, whether it be like deep rap, like a Kendrick or something is, kind of commercial as even like a Lady Gaga tune to like Mahler, like it's whatever I'm feeling. Top three favorite instruments and which one would you um, play if you didn't play the instrument that you guys play right now? Honestly, piano. I really dig jazz bass and if you're good, I really dig jazz sax. My favorite instrument would probably have to be like long lines of the, the cello is so close to the human voice. And I find especially when you have the strings in your hands, you can really manipulate that pitch to whatever you want. Like it's such a human sound. Piano is another one I really enjoy because it's like there's just so much you can do with piano. Like doing it from jazz to classical, and like you have everything at your fingertips. Like I wish I was better at it than I am. Um, so if I could do it all over again, I would probably be a pianist. And as part of the third instrument, like if I couldn't play trumpet because that's kind of the favorite above all, but. Like trombone, just whopping the low notes all day. <laughs> uh -huh. What languages can you speak other than English? And if you don't have any, uh, what would you like to study? I can speak a little bit of Cantonese, enough to kind of hold a conversation. I spent a summer in Hong Kong once, that was a really cool thing. Also, j'étudie une peau du français, so I can. I studied a little bit of French. 
Hablo un poco espanol. <laughs> and I can count to ten in Japanese. I really, I don't really speak English. Uh, but if I had to learn another language, honestly, it would be cool to learn an African language. Because mm. it's like really unique. And, you know, it, it'd just be really cool. Because, I mean, like, I'm sure, like, somewhere down the line, or I guess up the line, it, maybe someone I came from and spoke that language was really cool. Oh, I also speak the language of love. <laughs> Do you guys think that classical musicians react would, you know, like blow up kind of like this to how it is now? I mean, honestly, I had no idea because all of a sudden I just get this get this message from from M, from Umu. She's like, hey, can you come in and just like watch these K-pop videos? And I'm like, okay, sounds good, sounds fun. Yeah. And then we're gonna record your reactions. Like, sounds great. And then next thing you know, like, then he's like, oh, it's for a YouTube series. You see, oh, classic musicians react. I mean, it's definitely cool because I feel like we definitely have a different perspective, and I guess people really enjoy seeing that perspective. Yeah, I honestly didn't see it blowing up the way like the way it did. I guess. I mean, I kind of like was first caught off guard because we did that shake that brass thing. Yeah, there was. I looked at the views and it was like in the like tens of thousands, and I was just like, what? like people actually like dig this. And then like I was like, okay, this is cool. So like, you know, I actually like you know try to ham it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, gotta gotta supply the entertainment to the fans, you know. What drew y'all to play this instrument? I have a really kind of sappy story. Um, when I was in third grade. Um, when I was like around that age, like picking out instruments and all that. Yeah, back when I was a wee little boy. No, I'm just a little boy. Um, my parents took me to this uh, to a family friend's house who was a World War II veteran, and he played the bugle and he played trumpet um, during his service. He always played when people like the, the trumpet calls to wake people up, go to sleep, taps, everything. And I remember going over to his house and he played for me, and I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And I'm like, I, just, I didn't need to see any other, other instrument. I'm like, that's what I want to play. That's what I want to do. I'll be just like him. And then he was just a huge inspiration, like going through the process, always going back, playing for him. Like whether it be like, Mary had a little lamb, just starting out, and then eventually like bigger solo stuff. And it was really exciting. Well, mine's not that happy. I mean, not directly anyway. I kind of got into music because my dad, uh, he was a jazz saxophone player. And I never really got to hear him play because he passed away when I was really young. But like, around the time I got old enough to uh, do music, uh, they had a little instrument farm and I was like, I'm gonna play sax on because my dad played and that's just what's gonna happen. And naturally the first night that we go to like pick instruments, my mom's like, sorry honey, I have class tonight, like we have to go to the second night. So I'm like, okay. And then like the morning of like the next day, you get these little slips in fifth grade and they're just like, all saxophones and percussion have been taken. And I was just like, mm. no! But my dad's best friend, who's my godfather, he plays trumpet. So I was just like, well, I mean, hey, next best thing. And it all kind of panned out from there. I mean, it just kind of took to it. And I was like, wow, I'm actually like pretty good with this. And then like I did my first little like region band thing. And uh -huh. I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then, you know, just kind of spiral into this thing, and you know. How you here? Yeah. Are you guys flattered and surprised by the amount of views and comments, or fangirl slash fanboys that you guys receive? Yeah. Yeah, I don't really have any fangirls or fanboys, uh, but I mean that's all right, honestly, because <laughs> I'm sure they'll come along at some point. I mean, I got a really great scream coming up, and I'm sure that's gonna win some people over. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of cool that people are like, oh man, they're like my favorite person because it's like, uh -huh. wow, I guess this is like a millionth of what a real celebrity feels like, you know? Yeah, very much flattered. It's very exciting. It's fun. As a, as a performer, naturally, attention is always welcomed with open arms. So Love me. <laughs> love me. I'm always reading through the comment section and seeing like whether it be people like, uh, like fangirling over Shimon or like or me, you know, it's always fun. It's always entertaining um, It's cool that I'm able to like, you know, reach out to so many people if you guys were all in Hogwarts What house would you be based on your personality? Hufflepuff. I'd be in Slytherin Definitely be in Slytherin like n no question about it <laughs> What made you guys decide to become a music major? When did you guys decide that studying music was something that you guys wanted to do? I remember the first time I played in Kodak Hall, which is the big theater that is 
um, at our school. I remember sitting sitting and playing there with like our all county band, no, no, all state band, it was all state band that played here. And just being in that hall in that moment, having a great time making music with friends, like that was what really drove me to like, this is what I want to do. Like you're telling me that if I work really hard, I can make a living doing this. And that was amazing. And plus, and music has been a great challenge, like a great, it's, it's fun because how hard you work directly correlates to your success. And being in a field like that, I think, is really exciting and a lot of fun. So that's probably what drove me to be a, to be a music major. For me, it was just, I don't know, I really dug doing it. And then like, someone said, hey, you can like do this for the rest of your life. And I was just like, oh, really? Yeah, you can like just be a professional trumpet player like, and make like, a salary, not just like freelance. And I was just like, whoa, OK, cool. So how do I do that? He's like, well. First step, you probably want to come here for high school. And I was like, all right, see you next year. And it, you know, it just kind of panned out. And you know, initially I like got here and I was just a performance major. And then like I had like a little experience uh, teaching these little kids like about the trumpet, and it kind of hit me. I was just like, you know, kind of want to, I kind of dig the teaching thing too. So like I like just recently added on the double major. Do y'all watch anime? Yes, the anime that I really clung to. I mean, as a kid, obviously. Like, I mean, I watched like all the big ones that were big in America, like. Dragon Ball Z and like Naruto when I was in middle school, mm -hmm. and like I mean for Naruto that like I was like instantly hooked. I mean that's the storyline was just so cool, and I mean that was like I like binged it a few times, and or I guess like a different section. I mean I still haven't watched all of it, but you know like just the opening songs like they were really cool for like the American side of things, but like I went and watched like some of the like episodes that hadn't come out in America yet. And just like read the subtitles and whatnot, so like there are like a few like Japanese like phrases that are like stuck in my head, uh -huh. and I kind of sort of know what they mean, but I probably couldn't like pull them out of my head right now. But you know, it was just really cool because like the music like that like opened them up was just like, so intense. Yeah. And like had no idea what they were saying, but like I was just like, man, this is great. Like I'm ready to watch someone get their ass kicked right now. Like, <laughs> Um, I don't watch much anime. I don't know if this one really counts, but as far as like animated shows to definitely watch, Avatar The Last Airbender, like that show, my childhood is amazing. I don't know if that necessarily counts as like your traditional anime. No, Payton's giving me this weird side look, but, but I'm telling you, like, if you're looking for something to watch, like, that's good. That's fun. That's a cartoon. Hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I know it's not anime, but I don't. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. I don't watch much, but I'm just giving you my. Over the irony of the black man watch more anime than the black person. <laughs> hey man, one half, one half. Okay, our last question is: What is y'all's favorite soup, and do y'all like soup with bits in it that you can eat, or only soup that y'all can drink? Ooh, favorite soup. I really dig the seafood bisque that is sold at the uh, Java, Java coffee shop down the street. Uh -huh. That is like. Freaking delicious, and you can drink it and eat it. I think I have two favorite soups. If I can, if I can share two favorite soups. First favorite soup is gonna be uh, shark fin soup because that stuff, that stuff, not only does it taste, not only does that taste so good, but like you just get to feel like a badass because like it's so I'm, good because I'm eating shark and it's it tastes so good. It's Second favorite good. soup yeah. is a little bit more cliche, but you know going to Boston. Getting that clam chowder, and it's so good. It's so good. There's my soup recommendations. And remember, you drink soup. You don't eat it. Do you guys have anything to say to your viewers before we close? Thank you. And watch out for that k Will video. It's going to be dope. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for having us and wanting us back every time. Thanks for appreciating us. I love you. I love you. I love you. And uh, stay classy, San Diego.